it is fair to give details of one of the things that uh, has uh, been focused on regarding this data money. And that is that 300 million that the Honorable Nandala gave me. First, the Honorable Nandala has been telling a lie to say that he told me it was meant for agents, polling agents in that election. Clearly, if he had said it was party money meant for agents, I would have provided the obvious uh, uh, solution that it should be placed on the party account. Because whereas him as a person would fear, and he told me the reason he was giving me the money was that he feared revenue authority, that revenue authority was demanding money from his companies. And that if he placed cash, that if he had cash on his accounts, revenue authority would pounce on it and that it would be difficult to recover it. And I know that is for sure happening with the revenue authority. There is the law they passed called, uh, that gives powers of garnish, uh, where the tax body, if, it, if you owe it tax, they can confiscate money that is on your account and uh, pay themselves the tax. And if you have any queries, you go to the tax tribunal. And people have suffered that injustice from revenue authority. Once they go to the tax tribunal and they show that they did not owe revenue authority, revenue authority does not return the money even then. They say, OK, uh, sorry, we now have the we know that you don't owe us, so we shall keep on deducting this from your future. <laughs> <laughs> from your future obligations. <laughs> so revenue authority is actually a thief. <laughs> because that is really stealing. And this is going on widely. And that's why I had sympathy with the Honorable Nandala when he told me that he had tax issues with the revenue authority, and that's why he was keeping cash out of the bank. But he told me that this is money for agents. The party has no tax issues. So the money would have gone to the party account, if, uh, and if the party, uh, if the, the only issues the party can have with the revenue authority is maybe payee, if they have not remitted their payee to the uh, to, to the Revenue Authority, which uh, certainly would be even then a, a totally different, uh, different matter. So it's a lie that money was extended to me to keep for agents. party agents. In any case, this was September. The election was going to be in, was it January or February? January. January. So why would <laughs> why have to keep money for that long for, 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 for agents? So that is the first untruth. Having given me that money, as I have pointed out previously in other communications, it was about two weeks later that I got specific information of the dirty money. And, uh, but maybe before I get to the, to the, to the information, uh, I told the Honorable Nandala that my home was obviously not secure because my home is always being surrounded and sometimes searched. So I say, I told him, we, I can't keep it myself. I would keep it somewhere, which I also did.
discussed with him that could be safe. And uh, my first concern came with the arrival of the money. Because the money arrived at my home at 10 p.m. He rang me, he had told me he would send the money. We met here actually when he told me, it was about eight in the morning. But the money arrived at about 10 p.m. And he rang me saying that the other thing I talked about is about to arrive. And I, <laughs> and I said, I said, but Nathan, where is it passing? Because this is curfew time. There was a curfew then. And people were not allowed to move. And those who were allowed to move certainly would even risk to carry such money in the curfew time. But he said, don't worry, don't worry, it's about to arrive. <laughs> and indeed, before uh, long, somebody was hooting at my gate. I opened and it was his driver alone. He was one man in the car, and uh, he told me, the, here is uh, what was given to me to deliver to you. It was a big box. Now, because of the worry I got of uh, that man arriving in curfew time, I thought very quickly, because I, I thought this may cause me problems. Because if it comes and other, some people know that money has come here, and I have no way of getting it out. <laughs> so I can be found with this money, and maybe it has issues. So I thought quickly and uh, got one of my uh, helpful neighbors to accept to keep something for me he wouldn't know. <laughs> And so I detained, I detained the driver, having given me the box. Well, when I received the box, I opened it. It contained brand new 20,000 shilling notes, packed, uh, of course, in 20 millions, wrapped with polythene paper, with a, a Bank of Uganda uh, uh, label on, on, each, on each bundle showing the number of uh, the, 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 note, the numbers on each note in the bundle, the serial numbers. <clears throat> and, uh, 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 and, and that too got me a bit uh, unsettled, but I anyway transferred this money to out of my home before I released the driver to go away. And it was then two weeks later that the information about that money got to me. The first information, I got two pieces of information. The first piece of information got to me. And uh, Shortly thereafter, I think within the week, I got the second piece of information. And in the second piece of information, I got slightly more details about some people who's, to whom some of that money was, was given. One of whom was the party president, the Honorable Amri Atoboy, whom it was said had received 280 million. And so I thought it was helpful to begin with that one and see whether it was indeed true or not that uh, he received money. And so I called the Honorable Amuriat, and we met and I asked him, did you receive money from the Honorable Nandara? And he said, yes. 
said, how much? Said 280 million. Did he tell you where it came from? No. Said no, but in the neck, we had passed a resolution that we should borrow money. So I assume that uh, this is part of what was borrowed. <laughs> and I say, did, if it was borrowed, would you know how much? He said, no, I, I'm not even sure that it was borrowed, so I don't know how much. I got the, just got this money. I said, so what are you doing with it? And he said, well, at that time, he was moving around the country with the Honorable Waswa Birigwa in the primary campaigns for the flag of the party. So he said, I am using part of it in that uh, process, in the movement around the country, and that they had also agreed that while they are moving around, he should identify candidates and uh, maybe help some of them who needed some help. And he said he was keeping accountability. So having uh, told me as much, I now shared with him my own information. And indeed that I also had 300 million uh, in my custody. And I said, so what do we do with this information? And in the event, we decided to engage those who were involved in the meetings, because they are, the information we had got, there were meetings before this money was got. There was a budget made that was taken to State House, and then the money came. So those who were involved with that information, who were the Honorable Nandala himself, <coughs> the Honorable Jack Sabiti, the Honorable Jeffrey Ekanya. Uh, we said we meet with them, and I invited them myself, and we met here in our garden. Just to be sure there was somebody that was not part of that as some kind of uh, a reference point, I also invited the Honorable Wafula Ogu to here. And I introduced to them my information. I was promptly challenged by the Honorable Jack Sabiti, who said, how can I ask the party leaders, where they are getting money, when they themselves never asked me where I got money when I was a party leader. Isn't it double standards? Why are you now asking these ones? And I think that question, for me, summarizes, and it has actually been kept on being played, in any case, if they get money and it helps the party, what is the problem? Clearly, there is gross underrating of the gravity of this matter. You know, receiving uh, money from, because you know, our struggle has been very costly to those who want change. You know, many people have died. Many people are maimed. Hmm?
It's emotional. For people to think that, you know, the change you are fighting for, and, you know, at some stage, the, the Honorable Jack Sabiti said that, for me, I, I am moved by hatred that I hate Museveni. that I hate Museveni, uh, and that is why, you know, I uh, react in the way I do. Far from it. This has nothing to do with individuals. It has everything to do with how we procure change in this country. First of all, if, if there is a need for change, and how we procure change. Because you've heard us say over and over again that our country has been captured by the family of Mr. Museveni. Not even by an institution, not by NRM, not by uh, even the military, it's by the family. And we know what has happened to institutions where the money has gone from that institute, from those sources. So to trivialize it and say, you know, uh, because the, the supposition was that maybe me also, I was getting money from there. Why am I asking others where they are getting money? But if anybody would have information <clears throat> that the very problem you want to remove is the one facilitating you, and you keep quiet about it, then you are, you are sort of abating treason. You are helping the destruction of the mission. So anyway, uh, that meeting which we held here, did not yield the results. After that, the Honorable Nandala pulled out some files uh, that he wanted to explain where the money came from, that it was, is the, it is his money, but we didn't uh, get into those details. Save for that having uh, been the first sign for me that poor uh, Patrick Amriat was also involved. Because the reason I approached him first was that my information was that he was not uh, part of it. But when I invited all this for a meeting here, he was the only one who knew why. I was inviting the meeting. So I, when I saw Nandala pull out files to give explanation, when I had not told him why I was inviting him, I immediately knew that he was informed in advance what the meeting was all about. We tried still uh, shortly after that meeting failed to generate any progress, but it was clear that we would not make much progress, mainly because of the uh, election activities that were taking place at the same time. So we decided to uh, to sort of freeze the attempt to establish and manage this uh, until the election ends. And as I have pointed out, that was part of the reason I, I did not want to be involved in, the, in that campaign. Of course, 
uh, we carried out the same attempt after the election, which we have talked about already. Now, when that information came to me about that money, I quickly went back to the money which had been given to me and removed those labels from Bank of Uganda, which were showing the notes, the serial numbers of the money is involved. And that is because new money coming out of the central bank can be traceable when it is released to circulation. That's how they ensure that there are no counterfeits. The serial numbers are traceable. And especially if it is new money, like we had now, it's possible to know where it was released to. So I recovered uh, that information, which eventually I also supplied to the committee of elders, but which I also used myself to find out more information about, about this money. So after failing to make progress with it, nobody uh, talked about what we should do with this money. In fact, I was co consulting with my colleagues what should, what can we, what should we do with this money we now uh, think is problematic. We had taken a decision, it should definitely be returned. Uh, but as I have said, there was the whole hula bar of the election going on then. And then I am in Rukunjiri uh, towards the election itself. And I get a telephone call from the Honorable Nandala that they want the money to use it for agents. And that was the first time I heard of this story of agents. Said the other money, we want to use it now for agents. I said, fine, it can be, you can have it. Uh, now, since I was away, I suggested to him that it can be put at my petrol station in Zambia, where there is there was some security, and that it can be picked from there. And uh, I informed the person where it was being kept to then deliver it to Zambia. And uh, I was completely under the impression that that had been. Uh, and the, the other point I wanted it delivered it, uh, delivered from Zambia was that I wanted an acknowledgement uh, of the delivery itself, that the money was returned. And when I asked uh, the manager I had in Zambia, she said, yes, the money was, uh, was given to the uh, administra administrative office, I think, of the, of the party, and uh, she had signed. It's only now, during this inquiry, that I have had, so, neither uh, the people in FDC nor anybody in, in Zambia told me that uh, there was any problem with the delivery of the money. I only now learned about it during this inquiry, when indeed the Honorable Nanda Lamafabi was distributing papers to uh, show or suggest that I received 300 million, 
but returned to 99 million and something. That there was 600,000, I think, which was not, not returned. I had not heard about that at all, either from the party or from my manager. And so when, and, and, and the other thing he was indicating was that it was uh, delivered, it was returned on different, on different, uh, in different in, in installments. So when that came out, I obviously uh, had to in, investigate uh, what uh, had happened. Uh, and uh, I indeed established that it was true. The money was received, I think, in three or, three or four installments. But that that was the wish of the, of the lady who was receiving it. It was not because uh, it, there was no money to receive, but that she didn't want to take it at a go. That was uh, her request. Secondly, I got to learn that part of that money, because it had stayed where we put it for long, and that during the election time, money becomes devalued, loses value, that they decided to translate part of it into dollars. And so when I said, please return the money, they also returned the money still in dollars. <coughs> but the dollars, apparently, instead of gaining value, which was expected in the elections, actually the value had gone down. The exchange rate had gone down, leading to that difference in the money that was not returned. As I have said, clearly nobody informed me about this. Uh, there was absolutely no reason I would want to keep 600,000 uh, of money belonging to, to the party with me. If I wanted, I could have kept the 300 million because there was no, I did not uh, sign for it anywhere. I did, nobody knew, even I had it. It's me who told all the people that were involved that this money had been brought to me. And, uh, and so I acknowledge that the 600,000 or so that is being talked about was not returned. Certainly I was not informed. And uh, uh, you know, if they want the, if we, if if I have where to put the money, I have no problem returning it. I have actually written out a check. Uh, I'm only worried about who, whom to give it, <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, uh, I wouldn't want it to uh, to to go into the hands that are dirty also. Uh, uh, but that is the disposition of the 300 million that was brought to me. Uh, my suspicion is that this 300 million was go supposed to be part of the distribution because indeed there were others who received and I think uh, uh, even if I had used it there would have been uh, that's what I think was intended that I use it but that's my own suspicion with hindsight now. <laughs> 